Hi, I am Faith Gore, your mental health coach. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is the second of a seven-part series where we'll be focusing on child abuse. We'll get to understand what child abuse is, the effects of child abuse, and how we can support survivors of child abuse. Today, we're going to understand what child abuse is. So child abuse is the misuse of power to harm a child. And this comes in different forms. It could be neglect, child battering, child molestation, emotional abuse, spiritual or religious abuse, forced marriages, child labor, or any act that would result to an actual harm or potential harm to a child's health, development, survival, or dignity. Today, I would like us to focus on child sexual abuse because it's one of the subjects that is rarely talked about, yet has a major impact on a child's growth and development. The other reason why it's important for us to have this conversation is because, according to a research conducted by CDC, one in every three girls was violated before their 18th birthday, one in every five boys was violated before their 18th birthday. And these were just reported cases. Most cases go and reported. And because we have children around us, we can't ignore having this conversation. Then we can be able to either prevent or support those who have already been violated. So what is child sexual abuse? Child sexual abuse is when an adult or an older child uses a child for their sexual stimulation. And this occurs in two forms. It can be touch or non-touch. Examples of sexual abuse through touch are touching a child's genitals for sexual stimulation, touching a child's body parts for sexual stimulation, making a child touch an adult's genitals for sexual stimulation, making a child touch another child for sexual stimulation, playing sexual games, inserting objects or body parts into a child's genitals, anus, or their mouth for sexual pleasure. Examples of non-touch sexual abuse practices are showing pornography to a child, trafficking a child, photographing or video recording a child in sexual poses, and dressing in front of a child, making a child undress in front of you yet they're uncomfortable, making a child watch you having sex, making a child watch other people having sex, commenting on a child's body in a sensual way. Perhaps you're wondering why it's important for you to learn all this. Here's why I think it's important. Since we have children around us, don't you think it's important for them to know the dangers that surround them? This will help them be vigilant and if they ever get harmed, then they will have a language for it, and this will give them courage to speak about it. That way, they will find help soon enough to prevent the long-term effects of sexual abuse. Join me tomorrow as we learn about the effects of sexual abuse. See you then.